Morning guys, Monday the 15th of June 2020. As you can see, all's looking well up with the allotment and it appears that these are doing the job and keeping the seagulls away. Kenny, my friend who uh, feeds the pigeons for me in the mornings, telling me that uh, in the last two days he hasn't seen a seagull on this roof. He says he has seen them trying to land but then doing a detour and off the flu. So that's a good thing. Quick look around the garden. Potatoes are absolutely flying now. Now these are the Sarpo Miras and um, these were actually planted at the same time as the earlys. I just put the lot in in one go. If you remember I just done a test with these. We put them in and then we threw a load of wood chip stroke pigeon manure on top one as a uh, insulated against the ice as i didn't have any fleece at the time two as a feed from the pigeon manure and three as a covering to hopefully protect the potatoes and so far so good as you can see they're really really thriving in this bed now guys another look in this bed i'm going to try and get the covering on this today um, I've lost most of my spring onions now. The birds have just been in there and pulling them out. Um, they've just been pulling them out all over the place. There is a couple survived, but not many as you can see. Now the carrots are still coming along, slowly but surely. So that's a good thing. Two rows of radish, uh, three rows, actually two and a half rows there appears to be. Um, seem to be doing well. Cauliflowers that I got off my father-in-law. All doing well, with the exception of one. And um, it's getting a bit of an attack, this one, as you can see. So we might give these a spray down before we actually get a covering on them, guys. In the next bed, beetroots, see if I can give you a closer look at these. You can see they are actually getting established now. Snow globe turnips. Okay, all doing well. Cabbages. That are transplanted. Seem to be doing well. And then we've got the cauliflowers and the purple sprout and broccoli also getting established. Just wanted to show you these guys. These are my mustard plants and uh, oriental spicy leaves. Look at the size of them. Doing really, really, really well these. And we've picked off these twice. And these are absolutely beautiful. And look at the cabbages in here now guys since they were transplanted in here. Look at these. How wealthy do these look now, guys? And we've got the little icebergs all coming along nicely now. We haven't actually took a picking off these yet. They're just, to get, just getting ready, some of them, to take have the first picks. And then we've got two Brussels sprouts in there there was two that was left over, we just needed to find some place. We knew that these are going to have a longer growing period and the lettuces will be out by then. So they were just popped in here. Now we did take a picking off the Lola Rosa, Lola Rosa, and as you can see, they've already made a massive comeback. And I took a lot of these on um, Thursday, Thursday, was it Thursday or Friday? I can't remember now, but yeah, already a lot on them guys. Peas doing really well now, getting a hold. Radish, quite a number of them are ready for, pill, uh, for picking. Courgette, starting to put a little bit of flour in the centre there. And then these other little spicy oriental leaves that we planted, coming along nicely now. 
starting to get start, uh, starting to get established. I might still throw a bit of a net covering over here because the do the birds are still picking the leaves off the dark basil. No, there is only two or three dark basils in here, and uh, if they don't make it, well, they don't make it. Turnips coming along nicely now, guys. Some better than others, as you can see. Some are smaller than others, all in the same bed, same grown medium, strange one, but there we go. And then we've got the uh, runner beans. And I'm starting to see, I think that's a little flower coming on one of those now. Yeah, I think I can see a little flower starting to pop up on one of these now. But yeah, you know the potatoes, earlies. As you can see, these are all doing well as well, guys. I'm hoping for a good crop of potatoes, if nothing else. Well, uh, we'll just wait and see. We'll see how good the soil is or isn't that these were planted in. But as you can see, there's a lot of these potatoes are in flower. Now, these are the uh, sapo meters. There's four sapo meters on the end of this bed. And it's the sapos that appear to be flowering up. The earlies aren't flowering. Uh, these are the earlies. So I'm going to leave these a bit longer yet, guys. Plum tree. Or plum bush as it is now. Plenty of foliage on that, guys. The pear tree. Plenty of foliage on it. <clears throat> But we're also starting to get a bit of weed coming back through now, guys. Some bramble up along the fence. Um, we're going to have to have a bit of a weeding in here as well. Just to get rid of the nettles back from the edge of the fence. Cut them down. And uh, just to tidy it up a bit and keep them at bay. They're only up against the edges. I'm convinced uh, what's digging as well, by the way, guys, is a mole. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced it's a mole. I'm going to set up the camera at some point and see if we can capture it anyways. But, um, yeah, and I've covered a lot of this back over now with my feet. There's some rather deep holes in here. All the cardboard pulled up around the cat. Um, it started also pulling out some of the old membrane from underneath. Black currants, looking a little better. Some of the black currants starting to ripen now. Again, another job we need to get done to get a bit of a net on here, just to protect what little bit of crop we've got. And there's quite a number of nettles in this bed as well, once cut back and pulled out. And again, this is the first year just since the covering and the cardboard went down, so we will have a little bit of weeding to do. <clears throat> it's to be expected. Onions seem to be doing really well. Um, I just had a little look at one of them earlier there. And as you can see, they're bulbing up quite nice now. Or at least one or two of them are. Some are much better than others, obviously. Some are still small. Um... The little three cauliflowers that I managed to grow out of all of those that I planted. Only three germinated. Uh, four, sorry. One there. One there which is struggling, but it's still growing. One there. And one here. But as you can see, something's making a start on these as well. We're going to have to relocate these again and get them under a bit of covering. But um, it's finding some space. Hello. Now the onions have been uh, decimated in there. We might just pop them in there. Um, little dwarf French beans. Still doing okay. And some of the carrots in here. Still hanging on. Still seem to be okay. Greening back up again now. Yep. Just a bit of an update, guys.
just wanted to show you in here as well guys tomatoes all coming along really really well really pleased with how things are going in here for now just for a change nice to just come up and see things looking as they should be look at the lettuces again already we only uh, took pickings off these um, on Friday either Thursday evening or Friday I can't remember now but look at the size of them again already and they were picked right back as you've seen in the last videos Even that one that was stripped right back is making a little bit of a comeback. But look at these. Lots of tomatoes on now as well, uh, off the big mama. And uh, everything else, the flower is dropping off these and turning to uh, tomatoes. We do have a number of tomatoes on uh, some of the plants. As you can see, this one here, the uh, the trusses were so long, I had to cut the end off and there, and they were hanging on the ground. So what I've done is I've actually run a string up to keep them off the ground as well, because once they fell out, they're going to be uh, some weight on there, and they're just going to try and trail back on the ground again. But uh, there's, there's loads and loads of trusses on this one guys um, every just about every tomato plant on this side has now got uh, some uh, flower on look at my cucumbers now guys got a string in there now for them and although they are have been under attack now that they're getting the cell up in height I'm starting to string them up and I'm hoping that's going to help um, I haven't put any more insecticide on, by the way. We might just try and take a hit on losing a couple of bottom leaves. We don't eat the leaves anyway, so... And hopefully they'll uh, phase themselves out. Uh, all these plants... There's, there's one of those plants that was stripped right back to the bare root. He's trying to make it come back again. Likewise with some of the spicy leaves. Still badly damaged, but they're making a comeback. But I'm not too fussed about these guys. The other cucumber is equally grown as well. As you see, they've got a string in now and they are starting to fill out. It's took them a long time to get going, these, but they're starting to go now, guys. And uh, we'll just see if any of these butternut squash do actually develop since they uh, have now been pollinated. Assuming I've done the pollination correct, guys. And I've noticed there's another female there coming out. And I have another male flower there which I can use to pollinate. I've got another female popping out on this one here. I've just noticed. Close to the stem. There's quite a number of male flowers on this one as well. Um, this one here being one. This one. And then there's another one here starting. So yeah, it does appear we are getting a mixture of males and females. In fact, there's another female there coming up at the top here. And as you can see, this is starting to get above there again. This one here is well above. I'm going to have to cut this back again. And it's now putting out another tendril here, which is going right over to the polytunnel. And I'm going to have to take that off as well. And I'll cut a lot of big ones that was off a trail and starting to trail around the ground on there as well. <clears throat> um, it was getting a bit cluttered in that corner. Um, comp severely cut back this tomato plant all the way up. Left the top two or three leaves on. This is the big mama. Um, cut back a lot of foliage off there because I couldn't hardly see the big mama. And then likewise with this, I cut a lot of foliage back down on this one. Uh, you can see how... So here I'm cutting these back as well guys, so from here, all the way down, I've taken the leaf off, all the way down, and we're just leaving the top, quarter of a plant, 
with foliage. This is just the way I do things, guys. I'm not saying it's the right way. Um, you grow your tomatoes the way you do, but this is the way I do it. Seems to work for me. Um, as I say, we had a slow go at the start of the season, but we're getting there now. So the little suckers, as you can see, look at them now. Getting well established. Oh, the uh, supposedly grafted peppers finally arrived from the uh, mail order that I ordered in February. Um, they aren't even what I ordered. But they did send a letter of apology saying, sorry, we've sent you what we had left. And uh, so, yeah, as I don't eat them, I'm not that fussed anyway, so we just threw them in. So that's one of them. This one's quite big and quite well established and a lot of flower on it. So, yeah, if we get peppers off that one for the wife, then uh, I suppose that will have paid for the uh, three plants. Then the other one was a little bit limp as well. And it was badly eaten on the bottom before it arrived. So I stripped off all the badly uh, eaten leaves and gave it a bit of a spray when we put it in. In the hopes that we don't uh, infect anything else in here. And these are the suckers, guys. Look at the size of them now. That we take and we took off the other tomato plants. All these are suckers. Getting well established now. There's still three in pots there, which I probably I might just stick outside because there's no room in here for them now. But you can see that they're already in flower, and got trusses. Don't need strings in shortly. One of the uh, one of the strawberries did die. Oh yeah, it's dead I think. Anyways, we brought it in here, fresh compost, threw a bit of water on, see what happens. Um. This little cucumber here was planted at the same time as those other ones I've just showed you and it's never ever got any bigger. Now whether it's just a weakling seedling or what I do not know but it never ever got any bigger. So we planted some more you may remember and as you can see these are, these are as big if not bigger than they are, that is already. Uh, I've got three, four, there's five germinated out of the nine I think it was I put in there. So just give them another little spray with water to see if anything else pops through out of the nine. Uh, so we've got four, two, three, four, five. And again, we might try some of these cucumbers outside as well, guys. I've never grew them outside before, but we might try them over in the uh, garden once we've got a bed freed up with potatoes. So yeah, guys, another quick update in here. I'll catch you later. Bye. Morning, guys. Hope everybody's staying safe, being practical keeping themselves out of bounds way. It's uh, Monday the 20th of June 2020. So I'll give you a little bit of a tour over in the uh, grown area there. Everything's looking really well over there. Really pleased. Um, polytunnel, likewise. Everything appears to be okay in there. So not too much to do there, guys. So uh, yesterday being Sunday, um, I was pretty much laid up in bed ill all day. Um, not feeling too well at all. Still not 100%, however, I decided I'll get, get out there and uh, get a bit of fresh air. It's absolutely ridiculous heat-wise again. So, uh, as I said, we've had a quick look around, a quick check about. Now, I need to top up the uh, pigeons, corn bins. Um, I didn't get that done on Saturday because we were doing the garage roof and the, uh, and the stock loft roof. So, I didn't get that done. I also got Kenny to feed the birds again yesterday uh, for me, as uh, I never came anywhere near. So uh, I'm back up here today, uh, Kenny's already fed and watered the pigeons, so I'm just going to fill up the corn bins as I noticed a couple of them were getting a bit low on Saturday, so we're going to get those topped up. Uh, fill all the uh, water bottles up in the stock, lo uh, stock lofts and the pigeon lofts as we, uh, some of those are getting a bit low now. Now that they're feeding the youngsters, they're drinking a lot more, and the hot weather of course, so they are drinking a bit more. So uh, I need to top those up, as in, if I get nothing else done today. Um, I'm not sure if I will get anything else done today guys, but I'm going to just have this cup of coffee and then I'm going to crack on and get uh, the corn bins topped up and the water bottles. And if we do uh, do decide to do anything else, then we'll bring you along as we go along. And if not, we'll just give you a final update before I leave. Okay guys, catch you later. Now I need, <clears throat> I need to do, um, move these strawberries in order for to get into this shed here where I keep the uh, surplus pigeon corn. I've also put another order in uh, for to be delivered this week for pigeon corn as it's getting down and I don't want to run out. I always like to keep it topped up. But I just thought I'd give you a quick look at these guys. Uh, 
Strawberries are seem to be doing well now. And as you can see, we're getting strawberries on. I really like this type of strawberry. These are the um, F1 Frisian. Now, all of the... Uh, Ro uh, Ro was it Roman? F1 Romans died on me with the exception of this one plant. Tell a lie, two plants. There's this one and that one. Now this one is not only just starting to get a flower on it now. But what I like about these F1s is they put a stalk out with the flower on and they keep them up off the ground. So like I said, I've never ever had any success with strawberries. This will be the first year ever if I do. And I still think I need to get these in a bed and they would do even better. Uh, but for now, it's working as, I, as I'm doing it. And I just keep putting them in this soak tray. Uh, I actually just uh, filled this with water on Saturday evening before I left. Because they were born dry. Uh, and I knew they were wanting to drink. I like to let them dry out. And then just leave them to soak for a day or two. And then that's it and let them dry back again. And it seems to be working. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to continue to do, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye. Okay, guys, so I'm back in the shed again now. Um, that was a bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Especially with the heat. It's really, it's ridiculous. So it's up past 12 in the afternoon now. Um, I have, um, in each one of the pigeon lofts, I have a uh, dustbin, like a normal dustbin that you have in your household, uh, in each one of those lofts. Now each one of those holds approximately 75 kilos. And what I have to do is uh, cart 25 kilo bags down from the shed that you seen earlier, cart them up to each individual loft, three at a time. And uh, I take them in, and then I actually mix the corn, three different types. So we have a bit of wheat, then we have some uh, breed and wean mix, and then we have some diet mix. Uh, and I mix all that corn together, so I put it in in portions. And what I do, um, when they're not breeding, they get predominantly the diet mix along with a bit of wheat in there as a bit, as a bit of fat. Once they come on to breed, they get it mixed in uh, three mixes and they get the breed and wean mix in there as well, which is, consists of maples, tares, peas, and numerous other protein-filled <coughs> uh, corn. Um, and I mix that in, in quantities, so when they're on, on youngsters and feeding youngsters, they get a higher level of protein, so that the youngsters grow, and they don't suffer any setbacks. Um, <coughs> but there's five sheds, times three, there's 15 bags approximately I've had to drag, out of the shed um, and mix into the bins and that will keep me going in some lofts um, four or five weeks where they've got no youngsters and where they have got youngsters it'll last about a fortnight uh, but that's me almost depleted on pigeon corn in the uh, in the store shed but as I say I've uh, a couple of bags left but I've got another 10 bags on order um, and they should be arriving sometime this week and I get a phone call and go and collect them up. So what I'd done after I'd done that as well, I had a bit of a tidy out in that shed uh, behind where the strawberries are. And then um, I also discovered that another three of the youngsters needed rings. So I've been and put rings on those three youngsters as well. They're growing really, really fast. Um, had a check in at the other loft and the staff van reads have give up on their eggs. So we've threw those out so she can go and lay again now. And it won't be too long until the old boy underneath and his female will give up because I think they lay just after those. So another couple of days, they'll give up and then she'll lay again. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have anything I could slip under the old boy the first time round, but I will hopefully on the second nest. He can have one of the ones above him if they lay at roughly the same time. Um, the almond hen and the khaki cock that was in the top corner said I think they're both full and they should hatch. They've both hatched. So there's two in there, there's two under the white bar, there's one under the indigos. 
the ice end still hasn't laid, the brown ball as hen still hasn't laid. Uh, there's two under the reduced and almond hen, really pleased about that. And then there's two under the qualmond, uh, they've both hatched. So yeah, all in all, not bad on the first nest round, especially given the uh, circumstances. As I said, the hens, some of the other hens were getting ready to lay because they were paired with other females in the other shed. And the fact that they laid as quick as they did, I'm amazed any of the eggs got fertilised. It transpires uh, as well, I've just had another check on the little almond project cock with the yellow hen, and they are definitely clear. Now I'll just leave them until they get tired of sitting, and then we'll throw those out and hopefully we'll get some on the second nest. Still nothing off the frill stencil hen either. So, yeah, unfortunately, uh, it is what it is, guys. Right, I'm not sure if we won't do anything else, but uh, if we do, we'll bring you along. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Okay, guys, so I've just had a bit of a uh, play this afternoon. And what I've done is I've actually set up another solar panel system here in the garage. Um, it's a bit dark, so you're probably not going to be able to see the LCD on this properly, but... Yeah, there we go. So basically what it is, I've got the solar panel up on the roof, screwed up, got into this solar charger. Exactly the same process as we did um, when we done the polytunnel. And um, what I've done here is I've actually got a, uh, a little 4G MiFi dongle with the intentions of setting up a Wi-Fi camera so I can uh, try and find out what's going on out here. Um, and as you can see, I've now got the uh, Wi-Fi camera set up as well, outside. However, we've got a bit of a problem in that uh, I bought a data-only SIM for three mobile and checked the uh, postcode area before I did. And yes, I'm getting a signal, but it's absolutely dire. It's only LTE. Even connecting the mobile to, to it for the internet takes forever to load Google, let alone anything else. Um, and I can't download the app for this. So there's absolutely no chance that this is going to stream any uh, images I wouldn't have thought. Um, so back to the drone board and it looks like we're going to have to find a different SIM supplier and see if we can uh, and see if we can get this to work. Okay guys, just a bit of a quick update. That's what I've been doing. Okay guys, so as you can see, um, that was a complete wasted afternoon. Well, I suppose it wasn't really. I, the job's done now, the solar panel's up and the solar system's in place and the camera's up um, and the little mobile uh, Wi-Fi does work. Unfortunately, the signal is crap. Uh, so much so that, you know, uh, as I say, it took five minutes to load, to load the Google page. Um, I'm only getting LTE, nowhere near 4G. So, um, that's an on-runner. I'm going to have to look for another network provider with uh, another data sim now. Um, I don't know what's, uh, I might just buy a couple of pairs of goes just to, um, saving a little bit of data on them and, and, I mean that wasn't cheap either that, uh, said so now I can use it at home but what's the point of that when I've got Wi-Fi at home? Um, it might work in other areas but, uh, it certainly doesn't work up here, that's a dead third, so, yeah. Anyways guys, I'm just having this cup of coffee, um. I've just had a bit of a pot on the play, but I'm still not feeling well. Um, but I am going down home now for something to eat. So, um, for now, take care, stay safe, and be practical. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.